Yo, how's it going? Welcome back. Chris Ramsey here. Thanks for joining me. Today's video is going to be about something very, very cool, very special, uh, in something I've been waiting for a very long time. My, one of my best friends and mentors in sleight of hand card magic, Xavier Spade, has finally released his work on the Classic Pass. Hold up. Before many of you say, well, I learned the Classic Pass on YouTube, I would like to say to you this. So the Classic Pass, first of all, in Xavier, in Xavier Spade's words, represents sort of the constant pursuit of the invisible impossible move. So it's a constant work in progress. Myself, I have personally changed my handling on the Classic Pass at least three times uh, since I've started this journey. And every time it's gotten a little bit harder. Here's the reason. If you're just getting into card magic, YouTube is your only resource for card magic, i.e. the Classic Pass. Uh, I have not come across a tutorial on the Classic Pass on YouTube that has personally uh, satisfied my needs for the move because I've seen it done by professionals such as Xavier and uh, it's nowhere near that level and so here's the thing there's so many little intricate details and you may not think you may think oh it's just this right but there's so many little minute things that that Xavier touches on and as soon as you find out what those things are you're like oh my god this is going to make my world so much easier and and it becomes more and more stealthy and more imperceptible if you're learning the pass on YouTube you're probably walking on a broken foot and what I mean by that is let's say I break my foot and I don't go to the doctors right and I'm like no you know what it's gonna fix itself it's fine I can walk I can I can do everything I need to it works just fine for me the more and more you walk on it the foot sort of solders together and, and, and ends up morphing into this this thing uh, that eventually hurts your back that hurts your leg and that may have to be operated on eventually because it's gotten so bad so instead of walking on a broken foot and waiting for it to become a problem well if you want to make it stealthier and more imperceptible you're going to have a harder time doing that if you've already got a broken foot <laughs> does that make sense I don't, I don't know so instead of doing that just break it now relearn it learn it from zero it's going to be hard because you're going to have to start over but I guarantee you what you're going to get the end result is something that's going to take your sleight of hand card magic into a whole new era of what the f now Xavier Spade is selling this but not only that I've spoken to him and I wanted to give something special to my viewers so not only is he including his work on the classic pass but he's also including Alex Pandre's work on the brick pass Alex Pandre is another great sleight of hand guy who runs the blue crown magic company and to boot he's throwing in one of my favorite gimmicks of the year which is malice <laughs> The appearing deck or the vanishing deck or uh, the writing changing instantly uh, that all comes included with malice um, you get a whole bunch of gimmicks on the inside uh, so if one doesn't work you can do another and another and another. You get gimmicks to last you a long time and they should last you a long time. But the ideas that you can come up with this are literally limitless. They're up to you to use your imagination. It's a highly visual card effect. It's literally one of my favorite gimmicks of the year. And the gimmick's really cool because you're left kind of clean afterwards. It's not hard to clean up at all. So all of that, you're getting Malice, the Brick Pass, and Xavier's work on the Classic Pass, which he's been working on for the last 18 years. Most of you aren't even 18 years old. He's been working on the Classic Pass longer than you have been been on this earth so the tips that he's going to give you is super valuable I know you guys like the way I teach you say that in the comments but I love the way Xavier teaches his things I'm always every time he teaches something he just has a way of, of showing you the intricacies very simply and he's like oh do this instead with your wrist don't push your pinky out I hold it against this and I'm just like oh my god it's coming together now all I have to do is the legwork right I have the fundamentals I just got to do the legwork so the reason I didn't actually put up uh, my pass on video is because I'm not proud of it yet I'm not not happy with it yet I'm relearning my pass works for me in performance I guess but it's not it's definitely not something I'm super proud of I know a lot of you guys have seen my pass on like some performance videos and you're like oh my god oh my god trust me it's nothing compared to Xavier's actually roll the clip here's Xavier Spade performing some passes
He's got a whole bunch of work on it. He also teaches a cover pass, which in my opinion is the, the, the most invisible way of controlling a card. Your hands are barely moving. It's so impressive. As, as someone who studies sleight of hand, it's just really impressive. A lot of you are saying, well, I don't need that for performance, or I don't need that for this. I'm telling you, th these are the tools that you're gonna have with you for the rest of your life. These are the fundamentals that you are going to take for the rest of your life. It's worth investing time into. It's worth investing the proper amount of time and conscious practice, effort that you're going to have to mold into a refined slight. It does take determination, it does take passion, and it does take interest. And if you guys are determined, passionate, and interested in sleight of hand, I highly, highly suggest that you pick this up. I've got the link below. This is um, a link created just for me. So on the site, you won't find this link. This is just for you guys. So if you want, you can order this whole thing. That's all I have to say, really. I'm gonna give you guys some other updates, actually. A friend of mine, uh, Franco Pascali, a 19-year-old cardist in Madrid, Magician from LA. He's incredible. He works alongside Theory 11. He just actually released his work on the DMB spread control, but he put out a video on Vimeo, which uh, made like the front page of Vimeo or something. And I'll leave the link to that below. It's a beautiful sort of artist profile about cardistry and magic. And uh, it's, it's shot incredibly well, like cinematic as so do check that out if you have a second. It's really inspiring and a great video. Great job, Franco, by the way. And in other news, I thought I'd mention this. This is interesting. Derek Delgadio has a show running in New York and Derek's show, I went to go see it. It's incredible. Really puts in perspective what magic could be, what stage magic, stage magic could be as opposed to what it is right now. So it opens up a new direction for stage magic, which I really love. And uh, I was really inspired watching that show. And then I read an article that he shared, which uh, someone went to the show, so a magician, not a big surprise, and, and filmed or tried to film uh, uh, the performance and I don't know why I guess for personal reasons maybe he wants to take notes or something which I think is super disrespectful I'm from the school of when I go to a magician's show whether it's a walk around thing or a stage thing whatever it is I put my cards away I do not take them out okay it's just one of those things that it's like magic ethics etiquette you don't riffle your cards and riffle shuffle your cards or take notes during a performance just enjoy the damn performance this guy worked so hard on putting the show together and presenting it to everyone knowing that magicians would show up knowing that every night magicians would show up but he still did that expecting magicians to do the right thing to do the ethical thing and not film not bother and not show off during these shows and uh you know obviously you're gonna have some some turds lying around doing just that so my advice to you and i've learned this in the past when you go see a magician don't don't bring your cards if you do just leave them in your pocket don't riffle shuffle don't talk to people about uh your magic you know if they ask you what do you do for a living you know say you're a magician and they say oh wow it's, it's incredible do you know and I say, yeah but you know what i'm here to see uh, uh, so and so and I uh, just I just want to respect that you know what I mean be respectful about it and this goes the same when another magician is talking to you I've been in conversations with magicians almost every day in my life and uh, my biggest pet peeve is when I'm talking to someone and they're just they're like yeah mm-hmm doing this. And I'm just like, dude, put your cards down for two seconds. Have an engaging conversation with me. Look me in the eyes. You know, I don't know why I just ranted on that, but I had to, I felt the need to, but that article is really interesting. It's a good read. Check it out. I'll leave the link below. All right, guys. So that's it. Just want to keep you updated and posted on what's been going on. I got a new tutorial dropping on Monday. So stay tuned for that. I'm really, really happy and excited about it. And I, I think you will be too. And I got to clean up my office. My office is a terrible mess. And I thought I'd actually take the opportunity to clean the office because I got so much magic crap laying around in boxes. I don't even know what I have. And so I'm gonna sift through it, put it all aside and you know, show you guys what I don't use and what's been thrown away. And then hopefully maybe I'll just do a giveaway or something and give you guys a whole bunch of magic that I don't use instead of putting it to waste, collecting dust. So anyways, guys, just want to keep you posted. Thanks so much for watching the video. Hit the like button if you did enjoy this video. It helps out the channel so much. I appreciate it. And subscribe if you're not already subscribed and we'll see you uh, next time. Peace, rock.